we don't usually think of lies as creative strategies, but when the situation gets as bad as this, very hard to escape the historical analogy of the racial cleansing, uh, particularly under the Nazis, and the moral obligation to tell the truth flips over becomes a moral obligation not to tell the truth if you're hiding refugees in your basement. And the guys with the ankle-length leather coat show up and knock on your door. You can't say, oh, my ethics won't allow me to lie. The basement is full of refugees. You have to say, no, there's nobody here but me. And I'm an upstanding racially pure Euro-American. So let me grab you by the hand and offer you coffee. Uh, unthinkable behavior, but if the situation decays to the point that it shows every sign of decaying to, those moral obligations have to we have to be able to think about them rather than just dismiss them out of hand. That's essentially what I'm talking about. And since the civil rights movement in its heyday, we've, we've gotten out of the habit. And one of the advantages of this terrible situation that we're in may in fact be a creative and moral wake-up call, that if I'm really a moral being, I'm going to have to re-examine my principles. I'm going to have to say, how is it that I may be obligated to do things which I would have been utterly unwilling to do a moment ago because of the human bond? And when the human bond is dissolved in this fashion, it must be affirmed in a deeper and more practical way. And it's, it's hard to name it all beforehand because with any luck, it'll be new. It'll be something nobody ever thought of before. Hmm. But if my imagination is limited by my liberal ideology, the only emotional place for me to go is misery and hopelessness. And... The history really is not transformed by miserable, hopeless folks, which is why I find it so valuable to say to my dream work clients, you know, it's a terrible dream. I imagine this dream that you've told me for myself, and I feel terrible. Very hard for me to see where the dream is making any kind of positive comment about anything. But I do know, and I, I wouldn't, I'm not asking you to take my word for it. I'm saying that I know on the basis of my experience, you, the best news about this terrible nightmare is that you have remembered it. Because it, if it were remembered and there were in fact no creative response available to me as the dreamer who's doing the remembering, then that would mean that the dream itself was saying, yeah, 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 you've got these problems and there's nothing you can do about them. And I have yet to meet in five decades plus of dream work any dream that actually turned out to say that. Now, I've met countless thousands of dreams where the dreamer thought that's what the dream was saying, that the dream was just reflecting the sense of hopelessness and no possibility that they already knew about in waking life. But no, in my experience, no dream ever comes just to tell you what you already know. And if it makes reference to some sort of overwhelming sense of helplessness, then one thing you can be sure about is that it is about that sense. And that it's come to tell the dreamer something about that sense which they did not know beforehand. And simply keeping that alive often is the best thing I can do 
And when I do it, I, I, I'm not even surprised anymore at the wonderful creative things that people come up with. Because just in that moment of conversation, they've been invited to experience the dream in a different way. Now, another theoretical way of framing that, probably very important, is my experience has convinced me that the seemingly unquestionable emotional narrative of the dream is just as multi-layered and symbolic as everything else in the dream. And the, the debilitating emotions of terror and helplessness and what have you are placeholders for another set of thoughts and feelings and self-awareness that the conscious mind that's doing the remembering of the dream has not arrived at yet. But continued work will allow the dreamer to remember that dream, hopefully changed in the course of the actual dream work, but eventually, days, weeks, months later, will be able to remember that dream, and instead of those scenes simply being an invitation to feel terrible again, there will be a, a sense of awakened possibility. There will be an understanding that there are feelings and self-awareness in the memory of that moment in the dream that did not seem to be there to begin with. And my conviction is that they were there to begin with and that these other terrible emotions were there to hold the place and to ensure that we didn't forget the dream. The main thing about nightmares is not how they make us feel bad, but the fact that feeling bad is the most reliable way of ensuring that the dream itself will be remembered. And the worse the feelings are, the harder it is to forget. And I think that's the point. And that means that the seemingly unquestionable emotional narrative about how horrible this was, was another symbolic event. I've never met a snake the size of an interstate truck. I meet the snake and I'm terrified. That probably has to do with encountering the archetypal masculine energies that have been symbolized by snake since before the invention of the written word, you can go back into the petroglyphs and demonstrate that that's the case. That unregenerate masculine energy, which is primarily responsible for 99% of the ills of the current world, isn't just a shadowy source of evil. It is also a source of energy and the possibility of transcendence and transformation. It's not an accident that snakes shed their skin. And so a horrible nightmare characterized by being just revolted and terrified by encountering a, a snake the size of an interstate truck is very likely to be an announcement Oh, the very masculine energy, which is the source of the problem, is available to solve it. From a transpersonal, Jung would say, archetypal point of view. And I offer that as a concrete example. And that whatever it is in the dream that is the source of the, the nightmarish quality of the dream, should always be looked at as a symbolic picture of, well, Leonard Cohen would have said, the crack. Everything has a crack in it, and that's where the light gets in. And it may be a crack that's been created by a violent blow, but it still turns out to be the crack where the light gets in. And I would propose that this whole electoral debacle is a huge collective blow and everyone is feeling fragmented and shattered by the cracking. And in the medium to long run, that may indeed be the gift 
that we need to get us out of feeling stuck, out of being unable to respond to these situations with renewed possibility rather than just confirmation of how hopeless I am. And dreams themselves are the best and most reliable and most universal source for encountering that kind of energy. The scientific evidence is in. Everybody dreams. My experience convinces me that one of the things Jung got right is everybody dreams in essentially the same fashion. And that all those dreams, even the worst breath-stopping, heart-pounding nightmares come ultimately in the service of health and wholeness, not only for the individual dreamer, but for the collective as well. <laughs>